diamonds were missing when the necklace was found in 1998, and Cartier plans a full restoration. Modern diamonds were on display in Los Angeles recently when Cartier launched its annual Love Day celebration with a love charity bracelet designed by nine chosen ambassadors. 10% of sales go to the partnered organisations and actor Hilary Duff chose a charity that helps meet the nutritional needs of children. My bracelet is a deep plum colour and my charity is called Blessings in a Backpack. And it's just, it's nice, it's nice to be involved. Once the wartime rationing was lifted from Europe after the ravages of the Second World War, fashion houses bloomed into an age of elegance and opulence. This exhibition at London's Victoria and Albert Museum features over 100 gowns by Christian Dior, Christabel Balenciaga and Worth London, as well as many others. The exhibition concentrates on the so-called golden age of couture between 1947 and 1957, when the combination of unrestrained style and craftsmanship turned these couturiers into world-famous names. I think the secret of Dior's success in the post-war period was that he was very familiar with the fashion industry. He'd worked for other major fashion houses before Piget and Lelong. So when he launched his new house in 1947, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was also very aware that everybody was fed up with wartime fashions and so he created what Carmel Snow nicknamed the new look. And this was a tremendously romantic look that appealed to, to women all over the world. There are several pieces on display by London-based couturiers such as Norman Hartnell and Hardy Amys. What was very interesting about London couture in the 1950s, as opposed to Parisian couture, was that the London designers focused on practical, wearable designs. Tailoring was a great speciality. In fact, the tailors were so skilled in London that the Parisians sent their tailors over to see how it was done. Sixty years after the launch of Dior's new look couture house, the market for haute couture is certainly much smaller. Still today, designers including British couturier John Galliano for Christian Dior continue to produce exquisitely detailed pieces, keeping the traditional skills of the couturier alive for a more modern clientele. Perhaps no one personifies elegance and timeless beauty more than the film star Audrey Hepburn. Born to an English father and a Dutch mother who was a former baroness, Hepburn has won Academy, Grammy, Emmy and Tony Awards for her stage and screen work. She also received the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her charity work. Hepburn is often considered to be one of the most beautiful women of all time. In the 1950s, she was not only one of the biggest film stars, but her elfin appearance and sense of chic was very influential in fashion at the time. Recently, the dress that Hepburn wore in one of her most famous roles as Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's came up for auction. Hepburn said she found playing the eccentric Manhattan socialite hard as she was an introvert and Holly Golightly an extrovert. The distinctive black dress perfectly suited the gammon figure of Hepburn and became a silhouette much admired and copied. It was made for her by Hubert de Givenchy. It's one of three known to still exist and we're very, very, very lucky to have it. And it's being sold for charity, which is the City of Joy Aid, which helps orphans and the homeless in India. Hepburn died in 1993, but through the purchase of this special dress, admirers can buy a tiny piece of a legend. Coming up, timeless luxury on the runway in Haute Couture Classics. Coco Chanel and Christian Dior are towering figures of 20th century fashion, and the timeless luxury that they created influenced all modern designers. One of the most glamorous women of her time, Chanel was born in a poorhouse. She opened her first shop in Paris in 1913 and became so influential, she was named in Time magazine's 100 Most Influential People of the 20th Century. German designer Karl Lagerfeld has designed for Chanel since 1983. 
and his designs continue the pursuit of expensive simplicity that Coco began decades earlier. At his most recent show, Lagerfeld outlined his particular attitude to the design of luxury. Chanel tweed is all hand-woven on small looms and it's very, very expensive. But I like the idea to treat something that expensive like something inexpensive, like jeans, because I never use the word cheap. And to have an attitude with luxury is if luxury was not expensive. Lagerfeld's latest project has been to commission 20 leading contemporary artists to create works of art based on Chanel's iconic quilted handbag. The mobile art exhibition will tour for two years. Recently, Chanel Diamonds took center stage in the Plaza Hotel in New York City, where celebrities, socialites and models gathered to celebrate the US debut of 20 one-of-a-kind diamond pieces from the Chanel archives. The black and white gala was held in homage to Chanel's signature colours and Truman Capote's legendary black and white ball held in the same location in 1966. Christian Dior began a revolution in dress called the New Look, with luxurious arrangements of fabric that broke with the lean and boxy designs of post-World War II. Under family pressure to pursue a diplomatic career, Dior originally studied science, but he was always drawn to the arts and to fashion. As a student, he sold sketches on the streets of Paris to raise money. The timeless qualities of his beautiful designs were recently celebrated in an exhibition at Berlin's Culture Forum. 180 exhibits showcased the life work of Dior, who died tragically at age 52. Included in the exhibit was the famous black swan dress, which German diva Marlene Dietrich once wore. Christian Dior was one of the early fashion designers who understood how to implement the total look, fashion as a whole. This means that he not only incorporated clothes into his haute couture for his collection, he also designed accessories and intensively dealt with fashion jewellery. John Galliano is the current head of design at Christian Dior. Born in Gibraltar and raised in London, Galliano has been at the Paris Fashion House since 1996, and his theatricality and love of seduction has been famously successful for Dior. Here, his haute couture Paris show is faultless in its invocation of beauty, luxury and elegance. The reason why Christian Dior has so much success with Galliano after 10 years is because Galliano brings to the house of Dior his creativity, his modernity, and he respects the heritage of Mr. Dior. A master of haute couture, Giorgio Armani follows in the footsteps of Chanel with his timeless tailored designs redefining what is feminine and what is masculine. Italian-born Armani began as a designer in well-known fashion house Nino Ceruti Jimenez before beginning his own label in 1974. In 1975, he introduced women's wear and his simple, clean lines became instant classics, making him the richest and most successful Italian designer ever. Very, very elegant. Um, his style doesn't shriek, it whispers. And I think when people are wearing his clothes, um, the clothes don't wear them. They feel very elegant. They always feel perfectly dressed for any occasion. And I think they feel comfortable. At a retrospective in the Royal Academy of Arts in London, the timeless quality of Armani's designs is more than apparent. If you bought sort of a navy or a beige or a black Armani trouser suit, you'd probably still be wearing it in 10 or 15 years. I mean, you may change the T-shirt or whatever you put underneath it, but essentially the trouser suit or the skirt suit would really last almost a lifetime. In 2003, Armani was honoured in Beverly Hills with the inaugural Rodeo Drive Walk of Style Award, a fitting tribute to a man who has shaped public taste.
a who's who of Hollywood celebrities walked the red carpet to celebrate a man who has changed the way the world dresses. Um, well, I think he's sort of been the arbiter of taste for, for the last at least 25 years. Um, he's managed to transform a lot of women who didn't know what the hell to wear into a lot of women who look great. Sophia Loren, who is rarely seen in public, made an exception for Armani, who is a close friend. Giorgio Armani is unique. After his huge success with the film American Gigolo, where he dressed the sex symbol Richard Gere, Armani became the preferred courtier for a long list of Hollywood stars. These include Jodie Foster, Michelle Pfeiffer, Julia Roberts, Robert De Niro, George Clooney, and Samuel L. Jackson, who remembers his first Armani purchase. I actually bought a sweater, um, and it was one of those feelings of uh, success for me, you know, because I'd been going by the store and kind of looking at stuff, looking at stuff, and one day I finally was able to just walk in there and buy this sweater that I'd coveted for a while. And, you know, it was a feeling of having made it, you know, that I didn't feel bad about buying it, and I was overjoyed that I could afford it. And once I got home and put it on, you know, it was kind of like dancing around in the mirror, looking at myself in it and feeling, yes, I own our money. Recently, Armani brought his uber chic to Japan, where he opened a high-rise flagship store in Tokyo. Armani's understated elegance and palette of blacks and beiges is expected to fit extremely well with typically restrained Japanese taste. The Hollywood stars that I think look cool usually are wearing Armani. So for me, it's a way to boost my self-image. Coming up, the man and the cars that exemplifies timeless luxury. If ever a man and brand defines timeless classics, it's James Bond. Some of the world's most handsome and charismatic men have played 007. The British agent who breaks all the rules but always gets the villain. James Bond is known for his taste in fast cars, beautiful women, and dry martinis. Over 20 films have been made about his adventures, films that have earned an approximate $11 billion worldwide. Recently, Sean Connery, considered by many to be the definitive Bond, received the 34th American Film Institute Life Achievement Award in honor of his acting work. Connery starred in seven Bond films, but originally Ian Fleming, the creator of the James Bond series, was unwilling to cast Connery, considering him too unrefined. A female friend of Fleming's begged to differ persuading him that Connery had that something special, and the rest is history. Fellow actors and stars lined up to pay tribute to the actor who defined Bond cool. He's my father, my uh, mentor, my uh, inspiration. Great man, wonderful occasion. I'm delighted to be here to honor him. And Sean Connery was filming in Vegas, and he came to see my show. So he knocked the dressing room door, and this bodyguard that I had, he looked up and he says, yes, Mr. Connery, what can I do for you? You know what I mean? Like, but, you know, so Sean went and lifted him up, my bodyguard, and just placed him over to the right, uh, to the left, his left hand side, and just walked in. <laughs> the current James Bond is the British actor Daniel Craig. Craig is the sixth actor to play Bond after Connery, George Lazenby, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, and most recently, Piers Brosnan. Craig breaks the mold for James Bond because he's the first blonde, but his masculine charisma more than qualifies him for the part. Craig's first Bond film, Casino Royale, returns to the very first Ian Fleming book, which details how the secret agent became the ruthless James Bond. I can tell you about this movie, um, and I'm not gonna compare it to any other Bond movie, um, but. This is a new departure, and there is um, a lot of new things, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the Bond themes that are still in this. It has to be because we're making a James Bond movie. Um, but wait and see. 
Many men and women fantasize about a life filled with luxury and adventure. And an exhibition of 007 memorabilia assembled at London's Science Museum offers the public a chance to make that wish come just a little bit true. All the accoutrements of the Bond world are on display, including props, images, storyboards, costumes, and the famous Bond car, the Aston Martin Vanquish. It's your chance to become a secret agent for the day. You're given a, a swipe card, a little credit card thing, and you go around the exhibition finding out as much as you can about James Bond, the films, the phenomena. Um, you're tested along the way, and then at the end of the exhibition, you're rated as to whether you're going to make it into MI6 or not. Ian Fleming, the creator of James Bond, was no shy retiring writer. His adventure-filled life was on display recently at the British Imperial War Museum. Fleming drew on his own war experiences and his work as a travel writer and journalist to create the iconic secret agent. Ian was not a man of action. He would like to have been one. Uh, he, in fact, he volunteered to go on a mission in the war, but Admiral Godfrey, his boss, wouldn't allow him to go because he was too valuable. But um, and Bond did all the things that he couldn't do. The silver-grey Aston Martin DB5 is the epitome of cool. Partly because of its association with James Bond. Originally of British build and design, Aston Martins are a luxury performance car, first manufactured in the 1920s. The Aston Martin combination of timeless elegance and power has made them popular with car aficionados worldwide. Despite financial concerns and a number of takeovers, including Ford, the car continues to be manufactured today, with Aston Martin recently opening a dealership in Beijing to take advantage of the new moneyed Chinese consumer. At a recent festival in Britain, 300 cars took part in a parade, driving past the Queen and Prince Philip. Nine decades of the beautiful car help illustrate the continuing qualities that have kept Aston Martin on the timeless classics list. The fact that it's still here looking pretty good, really, after all those years, uh, a lot of the years of neglect, I think speaks well for the, the solidity and quality of Aston Martins. I think that's what people love about them. It's rather like a, a Rolex watch. It comes apart and goes together again with perfection. The late King Hussein of Jordan was a collector who knew and loved his luxury cars. Abdullah Hussein recently opened the museum in Jordan as a tribute to his father. And the collection of classic and vintage cars is a veritable who's who of top quality luxury cars. With over 50 on display, many of the vehicles have been used on official occasions including the late king's coronation and public wedding celebrations. One car that can safely lay claim to the label timeless luxury is the German-built Mercedes-Benz. The choice of kings and the rich the world over, King Hussein's 1968 Mercedes 300 has a special story to tell. In this Mercedes, King Hussein survived a failed assassination attempt in Suela and thank God no one was wounded and nothing happened to the car. One of the hallmarks of a timeless luxury is that it both maintains its classic features and keeps pace with the modern world. Mercedes are prized for their design elegance and on-road performance. But Mercedes-Benz has also introduced many safety and technological innovations that have been incorporated into other cars. The average American now spends 17 hours a week in their car. So for those who can afford it, a stylish and comfortable drive is only the beginning. For Mercedes-Benz, electronic gadgets help differentiate their brand. GPS navigation has been standard in Mercedes since the early 1990s. And Bluetooth connectivity has been in the C-Class Mercedes since 2007. As for music selection, it's goodbye to the old CD player. 
We're seeing a lot of integration of uh, obviously MP3 players. Uh, everybody wants an integration kit to allow allow their uh, their iPod or their MP3 player to come into the car and to be controlled by the car, to be controlled easily uh, using good menus, and that's where we're going uh, most lately. As well as super fast uh, hard drive based navigation systems, which is new for 2009. Many of our cars now have no more DVD drive; they're running off of a hard drive, which gives you super fast directions, really quick calculation. Some luxury brands and stars shine bright, but quickly fade. It's only with time and distance that we can say with certainty who and what will become timeless.